Okay, so we are in the chapter on diagonalization, and we are looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. And we're about to actually do an example of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So page 61 or something like that. Okay, so yes, so we're here. So find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvalues of a equals 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay, so the character's equation is this. Okay, how, how do they get that? You've got to go, you've got to calculate the determinant of a minus lambda i, right? Okay, so that's the determinant of 1, 2, 2, 1, minus now lambda times identity matrix. So lambda times identity matrix. Okay, but that's just now 1, 2, 2, 1, minus, and now you have lambda on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere there. And you actually do that, you're going to get what? 1 minus lambda, 2, 2, oops, 1 minus lambda. Right, that's exactly what they have. This is the, this is the characteristic polynomial, that determinant. So we want to find out where that characteristic polynomial is equal to 0, because that will mean that this, this, this matrix A minus lambda I is not invertible, it will give us the... Uh, so the non-zero eigenvectors, because eigenvectors are not eigenvectors have to be non-zero, so it'll give us the eigenvalues. So we set this thing equal to zero. Now you actually calculate the determinant. One minus lambda squared minus four, so you get that, times it out. We're gonna get lambda squared. Oh, but you know what? Um, I actually often like I like calculating these with the gas reduction thing. So how how would you calculate this determinant using gas reduction? Um, so you could go you could go, so let's verify that, let me take that away. So you want to calculate this, if I want to calculate this determinant using gas reduction, then I will go, I will go row, maybe I'll make row 2 be row 2 plus row 1, okay? So that's going to make row 2 become 3 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda. Right? Okay? And these, that first row stays the same. So now the equation is, cash equation is that equals zero. Now we can like factorize out 3 minus lambda from the bottom row. And we get that equals zero. So you can see already we've got this factor of lambda minus 3. Now, could we do an, is, would it be useful to do another Gauss reduction step? Or should we calculate directly? Um, So you could go, and I remember for calculating determinants, you can do the same, you can do these uh, row, uh, you can do not just row reduction, but you can do column reduction. Mm -hmm. So let's do, let's do um, column one minus column two, okay? Because that'll make it an upper triangular matrix, so you can get three minus lambda, and then we're gonna have what? So instead of having one minus lambda, we're gonna have minus one minus lambda, one minus lambda minus two, so you have this two there, and here we have 1 minus 1 is 0, right there. And now, equals 0. And now we can see that we're going to get minus 1 minus lambda, that's the diagonal, equals 0. Okay, so that's the characteristic polynomial. Now they've written it in this form. That doesn't matter. Personally, I prefer this form. But you can see that those are the same polynomial. Um, they even, they're completely the same polynomial because you have a, a factor of a minus in here compared to that, and a factor of a minus in there compared to that, so minus times minus is positive. So they are exactly the same polynomial, but you know, in general, yeah, okay. Anyway, they have the same roots, of course, same polynomial, so the eigenvalues are minus one and three. This is why I prefer to write it like this, because you can see the eigenvalues three and minus one, whereas this one you've got to remember, oh, it's uh, minus one is the root there, and three is the root there. Okay. So that gives you the eigenvalues. Now the eigenvectors. They can be calculated by solving the equation, this equation. What, where does that equation come from? Remember that's just the eigenvalue equation rearranged. It's just this equation rearranged, right? With a lambda v taken to the other side and the clever trick of inserting the in identity matrix so that you can factorize out this thing from the v. Okay. So solving that equals zero. Um, um, and, you do, and now we do this for each different eigenvalue because we have two different possible values for lambda now. Minus one and three. Okay. So find the eigenvalues of A. So I'm going to do this. Okay. So the first eigenvalue we found is lambda one equals minus one. So sum it into this equation. 
you're going to get 1 minus so this is like this is like a but on the diagonal you're minusing the lambdas so this is a so a remember was 1 2 2 1 so we have 1 2 2 1 and then on the diagonal we're also minusing the lambdas and the lambdas are minus 1 so we're minus minus 1 minus minus 1 okay so you get 2 2 0 0 okay i don't like augmented matrices so i'm going to avoid that so we're going to get you know so the mates this becomes 2 2 2 2 2 2 times v equals the zero vector okay so you can do row one minus oh sorry you could subtract row one from row two you could also divide row one by two and you're going to get one one and zero zero okay and that of course tells you what that v could be many different things but one such v would be one minus one right okay but it could actually be any scalar multiple of that, okay? Now, this is a thing that always happens. The scalar multiple of an eigenvector is an eigenvector. So the solutions will always have be scalar multiples or even linear combinations of things, okay? So it's enough just to say this is one of the eigenvectors, but just remember that it could be any scalar multiple of that, okay? Uh, why, why is the scalar multiple of an eigenvector an eigenvector? Well, because, look, an eigenvector is something that satisfies this equation, Okay, but if I take a scalar multiple of, of, of V, right, what happens? Bring the, bring the alpha out because it's a linear, V is a linear transformation, it's a matrix. Uh, now we have alpha AV, but we're saying that V is the eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, so we get, here we just get lambda V. Now I'll swap the order of the lambda and the alpha again. Okay, and now you have, you see, alpha V, is satisfying the exact same equation, right? So it's, a, it's an eigenvector with the same eigenvalue. Okay, so the second eigenvalue is three. So you substitute that into the thing and you get, let me take this away. So you have, if the A is two, one, A is two, one, the A is, the A is one, two, two, one, we have, Three, so you're going to have minus three, minus three. So we have minus two, minus two, times v equals zero. And now we want to solve that. So we could do row two could become row two, two plus row one. And we could also divide row one by minus two. And then we're going to get one minus one, zero, zero, v equals zero. So that means that v could equal any linear, any scalar multiple of 1, 1. Okay. Um, now here's a, here's a thing. Here's a note that says that you're always going to get a row of zeros, right? At least one. You're always going to get at least one row of zeros because you can always at least multiply an eigenvector by a scalar, right? Okay. If you don't get a row of zeros, at least one row of zeros, then there's a problem in your eigen in your eigenvector calculation. Okay, so those are the eigenvectors with their associated eigenvalues. What you should do now is you should check that they really are, okay? How do you check to see whether something's an eigenvector? Well, you see it satisfies the eigenvector equation. Okay, so... The eigenvector equation is, of course, A, V equals lambda V, right? So our A was 1, 2, 2, 1, right? One, one, two, two, one. Our first v was one minus one, or any multiple of that. You don't need to bother with multiple. One minus one, and so what does that come to? You try and do that multiplication. You get what? You get one, one. You get one minus two, so you get minus one. You get two minus one, so you get one, and that does equal that equals minus one times one minus one, which is what you expect. We would expect it to get because the eigenvalue is minus one. So you have a v does equal lambda v. A, V equals lambda V. Okay, and um, now let's check the other eigenvector. It was 1, 1. What happens when you do that multiplication? You get 3, 3, which is 3 times 1, 1. Yes, so A, V equals lambda V. So we are completely correct. Those are the eigenvectors with those eigenvalues. And uh, I'll leave it there.